So 70% of Canadians, so the polls say, mm -hmm. want change. Right. If they really want change, there's probably no other party, most people feel, that will give real change than the Green Party. Mm -hmm. Yet you're still mired in single digits, low in single digits. How do, how do you square that? We're high in double digits in, a, in parts of the country where we will elect Greens, like Vancouver Island and British Columbia and in other locations. The reality of the Green Party is that we're a party committed to bringing forward big ideas, new ideas, and demonstrating by our conduct in Parliament and through the election that we really want to work for Canadians, work across party lines, work across jurisdictions. And since we're looking at a minority parliament, real change comes from having an ingredient in that mix that but makes it work. The, but what is the reality in terms of possibilities for the Greens this time around? I mean, what, what are we talking about? A, a handful of seats? We're talking about a minority parliament where the Canadians can have the choice of one to two years of fractious partisan sniping that doesn't get much done. Or with enough Greens elected, we could have four years of productive, deliberative, respectful Parliament. In terms of the number of seats, a lot more than now. <laughs> what, are, what are we talking about, realistically? Uh, you know, in, in your mo best dreams, oh, what are you looking at? Best dreams, um, 30. But realistic. Realistic, 12 to 15. You say minority Parliament. Mm -hmm. Some people who uh, want to see the Conservatives lose, mm -hmm. say the, the chances would be better if there weren't spoilers in the race and look at the Greens as potential spoilers. Not in those seats that you might win, mm -hmm. but in seats that where you're not going to win but you are going to take votes away from either the NDP or the Liberals. Are you a spoiler? No, I, I think people need to actually look at, the, at history. You say potential, but if you look at 2008, the year when we did our best results, we were about a million votes across Canada. And that's the year that Harper was held to a minority. Uh, when we were decimated in 2011 by being kept out of the leaders' debates, uh, that vote, our vote dropped to 400,000. That's the year Stephen Harper managed to gain well, a false majority government. But in both cases, Stephen Harper wins. In, no, what I mean, my, point your, is, your no, no, my point is, your goal is... My point is that when Greens do well, uh, Conservatives don't. And but that's they, what, still it, no, they still won. They still won a minority, even in the year that you well, did I so well. Well, I disagree with the term win in terms of minority. The uh, opposition parties have a choice. I don't like it when we skip that step, that step of saying to the Governor General, wait a minute, let's see who can who can hold the confidence of the House, and we think we can do a better job for longer. I'm assuming, from everything you've said so far, mm -hmm. that the best result for you, forget about what number of seats you get, mm -hmm. is a minority government of think, some sort. It's a minority. I think that's the best result for Canada. No, but it's also the best result for the Greens, because mm -hmm. then you feel that you can play a role that's in, right. in determining what happens after that. Any time type of coalition, formal or informal, would likely have to involve the NDP and the Liberals. Yes. And the way they talk about each other, that's never going to happen. It's the way they talk about each other. I think the math will change things. Depending on the math and the seat counts after the election, I certainly will attempt to uh, try to get them. Maybe I'll be a mediator, a matchmaker, some kind of helpful um, solve over their wounds to say, look, guys, can't we work together? And wouldn't it be better for Canada if Isn't we that, work together? Is that what you're really running for? to be that person? I'm running to not, I don't want to be any one person in the next parliament. I want a group of Green MPs. But you're also saying you want to be the mediator, yes. the peacemaker, the deal maker between those who want to bring down the Conservatives. Well, the Conservative Party is unlikely to have more seats than the others at the end of the next election. Should Mr. Harper have a few more seats than the other parties, I will call the Governor General and say we need time as opposition party leaders to discuss whether we can offer the, our, our head of state. But but why would he that's... take your call, the Governor General? Uh, actually, Peter, when I went to the election night party May 2nd, 2011, and I didn't at that point have any expectations of winning more than my own seat, I had the phone number for Rideau Hall with me so that I could put in that call that night if it was a minority parliament, that Stephen Harper and Conservatives would not again form government with a minority simply because the NDP and the Liberals were paralyzed by their hyper-partisan dislike for each other. We need to do the people's work. That includes getting out of a recession. That includes action on the climate crisis. We can't afford to wait. And I believe that we will govern better when we govern together. So 
I assume you still have that phone number. In your pocket. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> and I'll have a few more, a lot more MPs uh, to buttress the argument when I talk to the Governor General. Well, let's let's talk about bottom line in terms of policy. So, if you're in that position, the one you want to be in, mm -hmm. where you could be holding the balance of power. Yes. Uh, what what are your bottom lines? I mean, you've outlined your program. Yeah. Um, and it's extensive, wide-ranging, and expensive. Well, uh, we pay for it. Well, uh, you've costed it out, and there'll be arguments about w about that costing. But nevertheless, it's it's there from the National Pharmacare Program to mm -hmm. free tuition to ending oil production by the uh, the middle of the century, a variety of different things. Um, are all those bottom line positions? No. What what where I think. And it's, a, it's an absolutely fair question. And I should also clarify that in this discussion that I want to have with the Liberals and the Democrats, I'm not angling to get the Green Party into their coalition. I prefer the Greens to remain an opposition party that's able to hold the government to account. Well, in terms of what's our bottom line, it's if you do these things, we won't bring your government down. That's what we need. And I think that relationship probably existed between Lester B. Pearson and Tommy Douglas in the late 60s, and that's why we have universal public health care system, that's why we have Canada Pension Okay, well, let's get to what would be the things that they would have to do that would give you that promise to them that you wouldn't bring them down. Short list, get rid of first past the post, bring in proportional representation, repeal Bill C-51, reduce the powers of the Prime Minister's office because they are illegitimate and unhealthy, and real climate action beginning the day after the election, we have to get to work to prepare for the uh, deadline negotiations that will take place in Paris. Both the uh, Mr. Trudeau and Mr. Mulcair say they would go to Paris. Is, is that a step in the right direction or is that just talk? It, they, oh, they'll go to Paris, all right. But unless there's a lot of Greens elected, we won't make a difference when we get there. I want Canada to go to those negotiations, not as a constructive partner. I want us to go to be the leader that actually brings the whole process to a real conclusion that's ambitious and more aggressive than anything that's currently being planned. Let me do what I did with the other leaders in terms of going through a checklist on some very current uh, issues that uh, mm -hmm. the Liberals and the NDP both say uh, that they may ha impact right away mm -hmm. if, if they achieved office. So I ask you these questions in terms of whether you would support or what you would expect mm -hmm. to happen okay. if one of those parties achieve power or if together or they two, achieve or, power. Yeah, yeah. So the, this is you know, pretty straightforward. It's kind of a yes or no. Okay. All right? <laughs> if, <laughs> if you get Lots what I mean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, the TFSAs, the tax-free savings accounts. Leave them at 5,000. Leave them at five, so don't, go, don't, don't take that extra step. Exactly. Um, universal child care benefit. Absolutely keep it as is universal, mm -hmm. everybody. Mm -hmm. The GST, do you touch that? No. We are taking one point of existing levels of GST to put them into municipal infrastructure on top of the gas tax. So that's about $6.4 billion a year that will go into municipal infrastructure. But we don't touch the rate of GST. Income splitting. We remove income splitting for anyone other than seniors. The pension income splitting, seniors income splitting remains but that program is just too expensive to be able to bring in. It, uh, unless you have another source of revenue to cover it, it doesn't make sense. Small business tax rate. We believe the small business tax rate should be 9%. So a drop in that. A drop. Big corporate taxes. Big corporate taxes should return to what they were in 2009, which is 19%. Bearing in mind that in the year 2000 they were 28%, we think 19% is reasonable. It's certainly unreasonable currently at 15%. Big corporate tax rate in Canada is half that of the United States and the lowest in the industrialized world. These guys haven't turned into job creators. Uh, they've, uh, they've got, as Mark Carney called it, the dead money, $630 billion in corporate bank accounts. So they've, they've taken the money that, they were, that they've saved because of low taxes and they're just hoarding it. Uh, so 19% is reasonable. Um, when you go through that list, you're not dissimilar from the other two parties. I mean, there are some slight differences, mm -hmm. but for the most part, you're kind of in agreement with them on most of those points, right? Yeah, pretty much. What does that tell you? It tells me that there are other differences that are more meaningful, like the fact that, I, that the Green Party believes that a member of parliament fundamentally works for their constituents and that we don't whip votes, that it's critical for us that we restore parliamentary democracy, supremacy of parliament. We have other issues like reducing the power of the PMO that we think is, is critical. You watched the interviews with the other three leaders. Yeah. I'm just wondering whether there was 
anything that was said in those that that makes you think, well, you know, maybe I can work with them a little more than I thought I could. You see, there's so much attention on the personality of the leaders, and I think that's a problem in our system. The real question your is... Your party is your personality. No, it's Claire Martin, and it's it's Lynn Cornby, and it's Joanne Roberts, I, and no, it's no, Gordon no, I, Miller. I, I, I and know it's, you, you want to get those names out there, but for the most part, for most Canadians, yeah. the Green Party is Elizabeth May. Well, that's a problem of the way, again, that's a a function of what I just mentioned, which is the focus is too much on leaders. But the reality of it is, the personality of the leaders of other parties is not whether I can work with them or not as people, it's what does their party want to do in public policy terms. Let me ask you the last question, and I, you know, I asked uh, the various leaders this mm -hmm. question, uh, the other leaders, um, but in, in a way you've already basically argued you're not going to be in that same position. There's no way you're going to end up as prime minister. Oh, I didn't say that. Well, you you it suggested your goal. Hell of a TV movie. <laughs> How the Green Party leader in Canada became prime minister. It could happen it, under our parliamentary it, system. Anything could happen, That's especially right. in this election. Yes. But you basically suggested your goal is to be the peacemaker, the deal maker, to try and get in there with the other okay. parties. Um, so what is it that Elizabeth May mm -hmm. thinks about herself? Mm -hmm that could suggest she could be that person? Well, I'm the hardest working person you're ever going to meet. I believe in this country and I love Canada and I know how to forge... They all love Canada, you know, don't they? I, I don't for they? They, we have different... Let's say there are nuances of difference of how we see Canada among the four leaders of all of us. But yes, loving Canada is rather a precondition for wanting to be in Parliament in the first place commitment to the country. But beyond that, what I bring to it is that I'm good at forging consensus. I don't like kneecapping the other guys. I never speak ill of, of any of them. In Parliament, I've worked across the party. I've never heckled once. I believe in finding the good in everyone, bringing that out and saying, can't we, can't we forge a political consensus here so that we're not using Parliament as a place to continue to cross swords, but as a place to roll up our sleeves and do the work the people want us to do. And I'm definitely the best qualified to do that. Ms. May, thank you so much. Thank you.